Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, I had a conversation with Pastor Johnny this week about speaking, and he was mentioning how Nigel, when Nigel first started to speak, that Nigel ran out of steam after about six sermons, and Johnny's asked me to speak tonight. I didn't tell him I'd run out of steam. <laughs> <laughs> but this morning, I, I had a scripture in mind, <coughs> and this morning Ruth confirmed that scripture in what Ruth spoke about, about Jesus and servanthood. So if you'd like to turn to 1 Corinthians 13, I'm going to speak about love. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonour others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. After Ruth spoke on servanthood this morning, the only way we can serve is if we've got love. Thinking about love, and I'm going to slightly embarrass two people over there, and possibly two people over there. I've seen Amy and Ash's relationship develop over the months. Amy is very particular about where things belong in her bedroom. Yeah. She always has been. She's a little bit like me. Everything has its place and that's where it goes. <laughs> at the old house, she used to go mad at Carol when Carol went in the bedroom and vacuumed because Carol would move everything to vacuum. So, along comes Ash. The relationship starts to blossom. And this is where love and servanthood comes in. And Ash, for me, is a really good example of both. Amy's been at college, working out at college. She's now finished, so she's very happy. She's taken on two jobs. So she's busy out at work. Ash is busy working. Shattered because he works long hours and funny hours. But he still comes over to our house when Amy's at work and he'll come in, he'll go down to her bedroom, he will tidy her bedroom, he will vacuum her bedroom, he will put everything in its place. Ooh, it's my house. <laughs> <laughs> he brings all the dirty pots up and then he'll take the dog for a walk. <laughs> now, just another example of that. Amy doesn't like anybody walking her dog because she wants the dog to act how she's trained the dog to act. Anybody else doesn't do it right. But she lets Ash do it. So for me, there's a really good example of glove and servanthood working hand in hand as a, just an example. Not as much with these two, but <laughs> I've noticed within the church and what goes on in the church, servant hearts, they pick stuff up, they clear stuff up, they just do things without asking, without being told, they just crack on and get the work done. Yeah. They don't do it for their glory, mm -hmm. they do it because they want to serve. Yeah. And I've seen that in all the youth here. I think Harriet, yeah. one of the youngest, is probably one of the <coughs> most eager to serve. She stood at the side of me in the kitchen when I've been on tea and coffee rotor and she's done all the drinks. Oh. I've just passed her the cups and she's done them all yeah. because she wanted to serve. And again this morning, she did it with Ethan, yeah. just collecting the collection. Yeah. You know, she, she's there, she's one of the first to volunteer. Yeah. We've had Hope speak 
Our pastor's been away. Yeah. Hope's done the music tonight. Yeah. Look, yeah. I can't name every child and everything, but their servanthood. I'm glad we've got it in this church. Yeah. Right, back to scripture. <laughs> so, I've got in my notes to talk about the love of Jesus and examples of what he did. He didn't come here to condemn. You see, throughout his ministry, he came to heal, to give life, and to forgive sins. Pastor spoke the other week about the lady caught in adultery. He was without sin, cast the first stone. Jesus knew he was the only person there that could cast that first stone. He didn't come to condemn her. He said, you're forgiven, sin no more, off you go. And that's what he's done for us. He's come that we may have life. He sent his disciples out to do the same. He sent them out to heal, cast out demons. Where is disciples? <clears throat> That's our job as well. So, we're here not just to serve each other, but we're here to serve the community as well, and to show Jesus' love. And for us to show that love, we have to become more like Christ. I'm going to skip around on different verses now. Paul, 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1 Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ Paul knew who he was in Christ He knew that he was doing right by Christ And he said, follow my example Because Jesus is my example 1 John 2 verse 5 and 6 But if anyone obeys his word Love for God is truly made complete in them this is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. To become more like Christ, we have to live like him. Obey his word. And the only way we can get to know who Jesus is, is regularly reading and studying and understanding who Jesus is. I've read today and I can't remember where I read it but Jesus talked about coming and fulfilling the prophecies that's why he's here to fulfill the prophecies of the Old Testament so for me that tells me I need to read the New Testament and I need to read the Old Testament the Old Testament isn't something that's irrelevant it is very much relevant because it tells us about who Jesus is and what the promises and the prophecies are of Jesus so if you don't take anything away from tonight, take away, please. But we need to be soaked completely in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 5, verse 1 to 2. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved, up, loved us and gave himself up for us <coughs> as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. <clears throat> Again, we're told, follow God's example and walk in the way of love. Tonight I was, I was thinking about the scriptures I've got. I have a fair few scriptures. I could have probably stood here for an hour and just relayed scripture after scripture about God's love and who he is. <clears throat> also we see there in Ephesians that it was a selfless act. He was thinking about us when he went to the cross. He didn't have to. He loves us that much that he was willing to die for us to restore that relationship back to the Father. John 13, verse 34. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. When I was searching for this, I knew that was 
a command to love one another. And the first four commands of to love one another is us to love each other, to show that we are his disciples. It's like, that's not everything. There's more to just loving other followers of Jesus. Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 3, 11 to 12, and I've taken this from the New American Standard Bible. I think it's written better. Now may our God and Father himself and Jesus our Lord direct our way to you and may the Lord cause you to increase and abound in love for one another and for all people just as we also do for you. So not only have we a command to love one another here it is for all people and it's it's that bit of the New American Standard Bible translation that I really like. It says, and for all people. So it's not just about loving each other, it's loving everyone. Even your enemies. We're told to bless our enemies and pray for our enemies. And you can only do that if you've got love. If you don't have love, you can't do it. So again, Paul stating, love one another. So, 1 Corinthians 13, go back to it again, and I'll read it from the beginning. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith and can move mountains, but not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. I've already read 4 to 7. Verse 8, love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I taught like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror, but we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, love, and the greatest of these is love. So the first, part of that scripture if we have love nothing we do is worth anything to anybody we're doing it for selfish reasons if we do it with love we will make an impact we will make an impact here in Sobey Bridge so when I was looking at love Two other scriptures came to mind. One is Galatians 5, 22 to 23, fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. First one there is love. Two Peter 1, 5 to 7. Again, it's another list, but it's a list of things that we need to do. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self control, and to self control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. We're given a, like a, a scripture of how to get to that point of love. And it goes back to this. <coughs> We follow that, add to your faith, goodness, goodness, knowledge, self-control. I think everybody here will have had a problem with self-control at some point. I know I certainly do. So, Jesus came as a servant, as Ruth said this morning. Who is he? Who is God? So if we turn to 1 John 4, oh, good. I 
I've not even marked it and it's marked in the Bible. 1 John 4, verses 7 and 8. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. So I just want to encourage you tonight to love one another, to become more like Christ, so that we may see people in Sobey Bridge saved. We see this place filled so that we have to move to a bigger building and then a bigger building and then a bigger building. So I'd just like to encourage you. Love as Jesus loved us. Thank you. Amen.